744. Welcome back to your Tuesday morning here on the show. The past few weeks have been dominated in terms of news headlines with the BC wildfire situation. Marcella Bernardo joining us right now, reporter for News 1130, and you had the chance to see firsthand uh, the impact in Kamloops, how communities have rallied and supported the evacuees. What was your impression of what you had the chance to see here and uh, the attitudes of uh, the evacuees themselves? Well, I drove up Monday morning, and the first first thing that struck me was, as someone who grew up in Kamloops, the traffic was unbelievable. I've never seen so much traffic in Kamloops. And then making my way down to the reception center, just seeing the generosity of everybody involved, the volunteers, the people that were just showing up to ask how to help. And at one point, I over heard people who were organizing everything saying we don't need any more volunteers we have enough people and and the only place that actually needed help was the animal shelter where they needed people with expertise with animals so it was interesting to see how the community just rallied around all the evacuees that are stressed and you know frightened because they weren't sure if they had any homes to go back to so talking to some of the people is just amazing well it, it is amazing I mean to hear that sentiment that people were ready to help and as we look at some of the latest images and, and, and video that comes out of camp loops in the caribou region as it stands still 150 fires uh, active fires burning in our province at one point there were 45,000 evacuees uh, here in the province what inspired you about how the community of Kamloops and just say the Kamloops uh, kindness uh, of how they want, just wanted to help. Well, it was amazing because the restaurants are giving people 50% discounts. Uh, they had a bit of a benefit on Friday afternoon where they had a, a tailgater party in a parking lot at a shopping mall and they raised more than $300,000. So just to see that kind of generosity of spirit and it's my hometown, so I felt so proud. And then even talking to the people who were the evacuees saying how some of them didn't want to leave when, when they opened up the, or they rescinded the evacuation order for for people for a 100 mile house one of the men there had just picked up his dog from the pet spa and said you know i'm in no rush to go home like they're taking really good care of us here so it was kind of wonderful to see that you know some people were really anxious to get home others were kind of thinking hey camels is pretty nice and i don't really <laughs> want to leave so it was just wonderful to talk to all those people yeah it speaks to the spirit and you've done a terrific job through your twitter feed sharing some of these moments and you brought some of these photos to take us through uh, mm -hmm. that, that camaraderie with the community uh, the first one let's take a look at this therapy dog and what do you remember about this moment here well that's Mac and he's actually from Burnaby and he's a volunteer therapy dog that they use with the children because what they did was they got children to do arts and crafts and they would write their worries down on a little heart When I took that picture, it got a lot of response from people down here just saying, wow, amazing, beautiful dog to be, be doing that. Not just the therapy, but the art therapy as well for the kids, just to let them know that everything's going to be okay and you can let your worries just wash away with him. So it was wonderful. That is so special to show the bond with animals and how powerful they are with, uh, with healing. Now, this was the hashtag, BC Wildheart. Tell us about what was happening here. Well, that was the benefit concert that they had in the parking lot at the shopping mall at Sahali Center Mall. And it was just amazing. There was performers. There's a really good band, I think the Bees and the Bare Bones, that are from Kamloops, and they were doing Ed Sheeran cover songs, and uh, the people were, you know, giving people burgers and hot dogs, and there was one place that had uh, free toys for the kids, Tumbleweed Toys, had a table set up, and there, there's a picture right there where a family was asked to go pick up whatever toys they wanted, so the kids had something to do because they're all bored hanging out in the camps and trying to wait to see when they get to go home. I think we have one more photo to share about your personal experience. Tell us about this. That was uh, the local senior froggy was offering people 50% off their meals if they were evacuees. So I popped in there to grab some Mexi fries and saw, hey, <laughs> this is awesome. And it was amazing because everybody just kind of rallied together. All the people in Kamloops, it just seemed like if you needed something, they were there. People were dropping off bottles of water. People were dropping off pet food. So it was amazing just to see how the community came together. There were some problems with people who didn't get their money right away from the Red Cross, but they they seem to have ironed that out once the politicians got involved and said, okay, we're going to get this done. So um, every family gets $600 at least once up to three times, depending on how long they're out of their home. So it was just amazing to see how the whole community came together and, and being up there and being part of it was, was pretty exciting. Hashtag Kamloops Kindness. If you're watching us over there, kudos to all of you that have helped the community. And thanks so much for such a personal journey over the uh, week that you spent there and sharing those stories here this morning. Thank you. All right, Marcella uh, Bernardo, you can listen to her on News 1130. We'll take a break.